Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and this is part two of CRTC ruling Let's Fuhrer Filt Deny Equal Time from my Termel blog at yahoogroups.com. And this is about a part, a moderator of a debate who had me excluded from the debate for showing my party button when the year before he didn't like me having graphs and charts and props and stuff, so he decided to ban it all. And the CRT, she's just bad, uh, backed up his right to order us to do anything we want if we want to have our fair share of the public airways. It's different when you know Philp changed the rules to strip me of my advantages. Not that I merely flouted their standard etched in stone forever rules. You can tell a lot about their weak points by the things they try and hide. And though the court mentioned I'd finally obeyed Fuhrer Philp's command, he then proceeded to throw me out anyway. So when I complied with the rules, he threw me out anyway. I guess it doesn't matter when Big Brother says so. CRTC, in Rogers' view, Mr. Termel was provided with an equitable opportunity to participate in the debate program, and Rogers acted in a professional manner to ensure the coverage of the debate was balanced and not disruptive to its viewers. Well, how does Philp changing the dress code ensure the coverage was balanced and not disruptive to its viewers? How does dress code connect to disruption to the viewers? Just a lot of baffle gab, right? Making sure everyone goes on strip naked keeps things balanced? No one has an advantage, just no one's got any clothes. Anyway, Commission's analysis and determinations. Given that the election has already taken place, the Commission considers moot Mr. Termel's request for relief, right? So, you can't ask for requests before they do it to you, because you've got to wait till they do it. Namely, that the Commission compel Rogers to provide him with an equitable share of time before the election. Now I sought a declaration that my share was inequitable because their Termel disobeyed by not going on naked reason for denying me my share of time is not valid. Equitable time shouldn't be a function of candidates' appearance or presentation. However, at the heart of Mr. Termel's complaint is his allegation that, by expelling him from the debate program, Rogers breached the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time for programs of partisan political character during an election. And I said, well, unless refusing to obey Fuhrer Philp's dress code is a reason enough to not get a fair share of time. CRTC, if a licensee provides time on the community channel in a licensed area during an election period for the distribution of programming of a partisan political character, the licensee shall allocate that time on an equitable basis among all accredited political parties and rival candidates. If they obey Philp's dress code, isn't there. Similarly worded provisions exist in the radio regulations, 1986, the tele television broadcasting regulations, 1987. And, I says, and it says nothing about dress code restrictions on getting an equitable share of time from the other media, too. Besides, a dress code on radio? Twelve. In Public Notice 1995-44, the Commission clarified that the above provisions in the regulations do not apply to debate programs. Debate programs don't have to be equitable to all rival parties and candidates, is what they say. Oh, and new regs say debates don't have to be equitable. We can imagine the tortured reasoning that came up with that bent conclusion. CRTC, in the same notice, the commission further stated that it would not require that debate programs feature all rival parties or candidates in one or more programs anymore. Think about that. You can still run a fair game without letting all the contestants play. Lawyer thinking. Big Brother selects who gets to take shots at the hoop and who doesn't, and it's all fair according to lawyer thinking. CRTC. This notice followed the Ontario Court of Appeals decision, the Hitzig Boys, okay, in R versus Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, 1993, which held that debate programs were not programs of a partisan political character within the meaning of the Commission's rules. Think about that. Partisan political debate is not partisan political character. I told you it was going to be a convoluted reasoning, and here it comes. CRTC. In the court's view, while the participants in a debate may very well be partisan, the program itself was not because it presented the views of multiple candidates. Quite true, I say when the views of all the multiple candidates in the game are shown, right? If everybody gets their chance, you can't really say the program is partisan because it's fairly shared out, right? 
As such, the court found that debate programs were not covered by the regulations because they're automatically considered fair when everybody's there. I said, sure, you may not call a debate partisan when everyone is on a, in on a share of the influence on the voters, but that doesn't apply to debates where everyone doesn't get to play. So because debates with everyone are not unfairly partisan, debates in general, therefore, aren't partisan. And finally, debates with some people not there are also, therefore, not partisan. Lawyer thinking. And debates with only one person are not partisan for the same reason, that debates in general are not partisan, because debates with everyone there aren't partisan. I told you it was going to be a sicko travel through the labyrinths of the lawying mind. Leave to appeal the decision to the Supreme Court of Canada was denied. And I said there are judges lawying at the top too, you know. 13. The Commission reiterated these determinations in Broadcasting Circular 2007 in connection with the 10 October 2007 Ontario Provincial Election. Court logic, because debates with everyone present are not partisan, debates without everyone present aren't partisan too. Yes, sir. Court of Appeal of Ontario. So, 14. In light of the Commission's determinations in Public Notice 1995-44, the Commission considers that it is within Rogers' editorial discretion to set the rules and format for debates it chooses to air on our public airways that they got a license from and to exclude participants where, in its view, those rules are not being complied with. And I said, so it is within Big Brother's editorial discretion to set any rules or dress code they want. And candidates who do not obey these arbitrary and dictatorial changes do not benefit from the protections of the Broadcast Act for equitable treatment. Hey, you wore a blue shirt when I told you not to, so it's fair that you will, your views will be excluded. Lawyer reasoning, right? No matter what the rule, even Rogers having the editorial discretion to set rules and format that makes all the candidates go on naked for debates, it chooses to err and to exclude participants where, in its view, those rules on going on naked are not complied with. So the CRTC says Big Brother Fuhrer Philp can order us to do anything he wants and we have to obey to get our share of the Canadian licensed airspace. Our fair share. Equitable. Different from fair. Equitable they can be confused about. Fifteen. Accordingly, the Commission finds that Rogers Communications did not breach Section 27 of the Broadcasting Regulations when it expelled Mr. Turmel from an election debate program during the election for wearing his party button they then again forgot to say. Because of his appearance, omitted for the fourth time, I said, they just presume Big Brother is all-powerful, so there's no need to even ask why they changed the rules. Fuhrer Philp changed the rules, so I'd have to disobey. And now candidates must obey. CRTC, the Commission therefore dismisses the complaint by Mr. John Turmel. So the CRTC accepts officially that candidates must obey whatever rules Big Brother chooses to impose. It gives Fuhrer Philp the power to strip candidates of any apparel he doesn't want them to wear, any props he doesn't want them to display for any reason he wants. Rogers tried to impose the Fuhrer Philp dress code on candidates in Guelph, election two. Making elections colorless and boring the Fuhrer Philp way is spreading. And, he can, and candidates knuckling under on being told what they can't wear is growing. Just getting ready to obey if they ever get elected. Imagine, under the Fuhrer Philp rules, candidates can't use a graph, a headline, a picture, a button, a hat. You know, the trademark he left me was my royal flush tie. And that may be the next rule he changes for the next election. No cards allowed on ties. And I will have to obey or be done on my time. And the CRTC will say that is valid because I should have obeyed. So, another piece of shameful Canadian jurisprudence. Big Brother sets the rules that can strip candidates of their party affiliation, helpful props for their presentations, and there's nothing we can do to get a fair share of Canadian airspace they are only licensed to use without obeying Big Brother's rules. If I can be denied my fair share of airtime for a mere showing of my party button, the protections of democracy and the Broadcasting Act and the CRTC are a joke. 
You have to admit, it makes you want to puke when you realize that it means the CRTC is letting Fuhrer Philp get away with ejecting me from my fair share of the time in the game for a dress code violation. He arbitrarily changed to get me. Can't have democracy without a proper dress code, right? So, now I have to appeal the CRDC decision to the Federal Court of Appeal. I wonder if the court will agree that dress code violations are reason enough to suspend the equitableness requirements in the Broadcast Act. We'll find out. So, last but not least, this is going off to the Federal Court of Appeal. I'm going to appeal it, and I'm going to see if the court agrees that dress code violations are reason enough for the CRTC regulations on equitable treatment not to apply, and also to challenge the court ruling that says that you don't have to be equitable if it's a debate, because we presume everybody's getting a fair shot.